hello my dear student so today we are going to talk up something about the you know question answers especially for the viva purposes for different school level exams as well as you might see these type of questions often in your uh, interview questions also you can say so basically if you talk about java programming and also there are few common question which you often see in any of the uh, school level exam whether it's a board exam or you might see this type of question even in viva also interviewer will normally ask you so the very first question often he'll ask you about uh, what do you mean by a java programming actually and how it is different from other type of programming and why it is so popular and why we actually opt java programming ahead of other programming so like you can answer in such a way that java programming basically is a platform independent programming what i've already been discussed in the previous few uh discussions so because of it is platform independent it is so popular and that is why it is the most popular language for your web based application because where we are talking about the web we have different persons coming from a different part of the world using different type of platform so java is uh, one of the unique language which support all the different types of platform whether it is a windows based platform whether it is ios based platform whether it is any other uh, operating system or a platform so no matter what the platform is it is going to work in all the machines so this makes java a popular language especially for internet and the next thing is because the java program are very lightweight program lightweight in the sense that the size of the this particular program or a file or a application is really very small in size in kb especially so that is why uploading downloading of these program is quite easy and fast instead of any other programming where the program can be a bit heavier bigger in size so takes much space much time and need higher internet speed also so this is one of the question normally i think you should answer in such a way now next thing is what are the basic concepts of oop that i already been discussed that we will not go in detail but basically it is because of it is platform independent it is at the same time support data hiding or encapsulation then polymorphism and inheritance so these are the three building blocks also you can say which normally is a unique feature of java language now the next question can be what is a class so that also we have discussed so class is an abstract entity as well as it's a container which contains normally variables and methods okay and the next question for your viva as well as for your interview which is quite common is maybe examiner may ask you what are the different data types what java supports so basically your answer should be the basically there are two different data types broadly they are called primitive data types and non primitive data types now next question can be what are primitive data types basically the primitive data types are those data types which are already available in java's library means these variable are available to you as and when it is required you can directly use them now he may ask you can you name all these yes so answer is there are eight in numbers and these are basically if we will see for the integer data type 
which store a whole number so your answer should be byte short int long these four integer data types they are varying in their size in computer memory as well as their range now next two is floating type which store floating type of value that is it can store fractional values also unlike integer data types they are again of two they are namely float and double float has a lesser range whereas double has a higher range now the next is char which can store a single character it can be any alphabet it can be a numeric value also or it can be any special character but a single character okay whereas the lastly we have boolean boolean is something you know that we'll discuss in detail later on also but boolean is basically which can store e either of the two value the possibility is only two that is true and false it will only store value true and false either of the two so if you again recount them they are basically eight your answer should be primitive data types are eight in numbers that is byte short and long float double care and boolean fine now the next question is the other type is reference data type we also call them as derived data type okay or you can say non primitive data types also so if we want to list these data type they are basically classes arrays and interfaces so as i discussed with you classes a class itself is a data type we had a discussion in this topic in my previous videos so class is one of them whereas arrays is another type if we'll discuss in short the arrays is actually a kind of variable which can store multiple values but of similar data type like if i want to store the number of 10 student in my class over 20 student in my class so what i can do is in a single variable i can store these multiple values in different index numbers that again is a quite a vast topic we'll discuss in detail but here just we are taking those questions so array is the second one and third one is interface now interface again is a broad topic but here we are going to discuss in brief interface is actually a type of class only the way we make a class in a similar manner we make a interface but with interface the important thing is again it has variable and method like class but here the variables are always final in nature whereas the value cannot be changed which is unlike c and unlike class sorry and the other feature is the methods they are always abstract in nature so in general interface has again variable and methods like a class but variables are always final in nature whereas methods are abstract in nature that detail we will discuss later on but now as you can see if the question is what are reference data types so you can say they are basically derived ones and they are three in numbers they are classes arrays and interface so this is one of the question i think you should be able to answer now the next is constructor this common term we often use in java programming if you are following my channel then later on in my channel i'll explain all in this detail what are constructors but if you look at the constructor just now the constructor is a special kind of method but what makes this constructor a special one because first thing the name of the constructor should always be the same as that of a class name means if you are making a constructor remember that you cannot name 
this constructor other than the class name let's say my class name is abc so if i'm making a constructor its name should always be abc means i will make a method as such but its name will always be same as that of class name remember you need to check the cases also if in abc i'm writing a capital b and c then always the constructor name should also be a capital b c fine now the next thing is not only the name actually the second feature of a constructor is that it does not return any value because a method in general may or may not return any value if it is required it will return a value if it doesn't then then we need not to return a value through our method but constructor never returns a value this is one of the important feature now the next is when a method does not return a value there's a keyword called void that is always be used in front of a method name let's say void count here count is a method if it is not returning any value i mentioned void in front of it but if a constructor with the name abc not returning any value i will write abc bracket open and close that's all i will not write even void so make sure that a constructor never returns a value but while defining a constructor i will not use a keyword even void also now the next thing is what is the role of a constructor this can be your next question the role of a constructor is to initialize the object when that object is being created means to create an object we definitely need a class and by instantiating a class we create an object but while creating an object we need to follow the right sequence and the sequence would be the class name object name then equal new and then the constructor name followed by semicolon so as you can see that i'll express in detail also in the next chapter but this is just in brief i'm giving you some questions related to your interview or to your viva and different exams so the role of a constructor is to initialize an object when it is created now the next question can be what type of constructor we can have so basically there are three types of constructor we have that is default constructor parameterized constructor and next one is the copy constructor now we'll talk about default constructor this can be one of the question now default constructor is a constructor which is automatically supplied by or available in our program you if we have not created at our own that means these default constructor we need not to create these are available to us automatically by the program itself and this default constructor doesn't do anything as such okay now next is parameterized constructor that means a constructor which has got a parameter list it is different from a default because default does not have any parameters in it whereas a parameterized constructor has parameters a list of parameters so let's say abc is my constructor so i will write abc then small bracket open and in that small bracket open and close i will mention all the parameters what i need in that particular constructor can be of int float anything it depends we will not go in detail right now here and the last one is copy constructor now 
what is copy constructor this copy constructor is actually again a constructor but this copy constructor has an object as a parameter like we just discussed about parameterized constructor has got integer or float all these all primitive data types in a, in its parameter list whereas in a default constructor there is no parameter whereas in copy constructor it will have an object as a parameter and the role of a copy constructor is to pass that object value to another object since we know we need an object to create the member of uh, to invoke the member of a class and to create an object we need a constructor and the role of a constructor is to initialize an object so let's say i have created one object with the parameterized constructor and that object also has been initialized with those values now if i want to create another object and i want to initialize that another object with the same value what that previous was object was holding that can easily be done with copy constructor whereas the object which we have just created will be passed as a as a parameter for another object so copy constructor is simply doing what it is simply passing the value of the first object to the another object so now both object will hold the same value so it is just simply means copying and pasting when we are copying pasting one content from another or one file from another both file will have the same content so it is more or less like that so today we are concluding here only and in my next episode i will have bring some more question for you especially for your viva or your for interview and keep following my youtube channel and if you have not subscribed please subscribe my channel and i will bring more concepts and the content regarding the java programming thank you very much